In this video, I am going to give you five ideas to make that journey to the adventure location much more interesting for both your players and their characters. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This video is part of my Gibbering GM video series in which I share ideas and strategies that I use to run both my fantasy and sci-fi campaigns. Now, I have to admit that in the last video, I noticed that I kept going backwards and forwards like this for my mic, which actually didn't do much for the sound quality so I've got a note a post-it stuck just below my camera saying keep still in wills before I share you my ideas please if you found this video or any of the videos on my channel supportive then please consider like commenting and subscribing it really does support the content that I produce and my channel and please always stick your comments down below so if you are like me I usually start off my campaigns in a town or village where the players can meet up get to know each other and make start making their names as heroes but there comes a time when they need to venture out of that town to journey to another location on a job or quest with the adventure location whether or not this is a tomb a ruined castle a set of disused mining tunnels or even a science facility once that is created and ready to greet the players there is the question of how the party will actually get to this location Often this might simply be part of the narrative. You travel for several weeks until you reach the location and nothing really happens on the journey. But for me as the GM, I like to consider that the journey is just as important and enjoyable than the final location. So here are five ideas that you could implement into your campaigns that will keep the party busy and on their and on their toes as they journey to their final location. So first up, traveling companions. So as the party is about to set off some person or group of people approach the group and ask if they could accompany the party either all the way or some of the way um, as they journey to their final location they are usually looking for protection and can easily pay for the party services but this is not the only reason they might want to travel with the party they could for example be escaping from someone or something that is trying to get them and track them down in the starting town or they might just want to get away from a jealous lover. The important thing is to try and ensure that the party are unaware of the possible events that might happen along the journey with this new travelling companion in tow. Let me give you a few examples. In the Mithras adventure called Sleeping Erwood, a nice lady with her own wagon, servants and guards wanted to journey to Erwood with the group to see if her husband was still alive. She turned out to be not defenceless at all or sincere as the party originally thought and the final battle was something quite impressive. And for, to give you another idea, when the group headed off to find the rogue sorcerer Melanie in the last 
um, series of adventures, the group actually paid for a couple of assassins to accompany them on the journey across the high seas. The woman was pretending to be pregnant, and when the knife was drawn, there were only casters in the cabin, with the heavy-duty fighters out on deck. Believe me, there were plenty of shield spells being cast and sick buckets flying everywhere. So Mithras, the rule set that we use for our campaigns, has an excellent fatigue system. That means if the party are doing too much of one thing, for example, fighting or just enduring strenuous activities, for example, climbing a cliff during a storm, they can quickly become tired and that will impact on both their skill roles and their actions. Other rule sets probably have something um, similar, but if they do not, then you can always apply negative modifiers as the party becomes more tired. But why would the party be getting tired? Well, mainly because their journey progresses. As their journey progresses, they do not get some unbroken sleep. The way you prevent the sleep from happening is completely up to you, but some ideas could be frequent animal attacks. Maybe a pack of hungry wolves are shadowing the party throughout the day and then attack at night. Or even maybe the weather prevents them from keeping dry and warm and so interrupts their sleep. My favourite source of broken sleep was provided by Tiffin, the alchemist apprentice. As, as well as being rather ill-kempt and, and rather dirty, Tiffin was a snorer. As the party settled down to sleep, her snores would be heard for miles around. Of course, the party did need to make perception rolls to see whether or not they were woken up by Tiffin's snores. I've never seen players so happy to have low perception skills or to fail a roll completely. So next up, number three, stopping the way forward. Stay still, in Wills. So the route to the adventure location has probably been well researched by the party before they let leave or left the safety of their home base. They might be following a map that they pried from the clutched hands of a dying miner or even the directions given to them by an old hermit that lives by themselves out in the woods. But no matter how they found it, they usually know the way. But what happens when that way is blocked or barred? The idea I got from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, when the Fellowship of the Ring could not go along their initial route and were forced to descend into the mines of Moria. They have a cave troll. So ideas that might stop the party from following their initial route re, um, include bridges being broken, burnt or even completely removed, bandits who have toppled trees to block the road, a flooded river or even a trail that just stops and ceases to continue any further. The idea of this scenario is that the players will definitely need to rethink their journey and of course that might lead them into another complete scenario. So we're going to talk about idea number four, which I've called fleeing in the opposite direction. So it is important that we present the adventurers, I think, with a range of scenarios to overcome. We don't always want bandits or monsters blocking the way. Sometimes the encounter needs to be, well, a little bit more psychological. With this idea of fleeing in the opposite direction, the party are met with a group of people heading in the opposite direction to which they are travelling. The number is completely up to you. It could be just a couple of people or a whole village 
or what remains of a whole village. The important aspect of this encounter is why these people are fleeing and what information does that provide for the party. Initial ideas might include a vicious monster or a marauding band of muggers and thieves, or the fleeing caravan might be trying to escape from a disease or a plague that is slowly killing off their members. And are some of them still infected? Whatever the reason, the encounter allows the GM to plant clues and ideas into the minds of the players. Of course, the fleeing village just might not have been completely accurate when they say the beast was 10 foot tall and ate whole houses for breakfast. The idea also allows you to plant a subplot into the journey. What did the group leave behind? Can they provide a scout? Do they need someone or something recovered? Or do they just want the party to promise that they will revenge their fallen fellow villagers. And I think I have kept my favourite one till last. Number five, On the Way Home. This one is a nice twist that is or might be perceived as a little bit mean to the party. You have to remember that you don't just need to have one of the previous ideas that I've mentioned in on the journey to the location. It could be every single one of them have been used, but this last one might not be expected by everyone. The idea is that the party has successfully reached the location, completed the job and or quest successfully. They are probably battered, bruised, low on health and magic, but filled with treasure, coins and that self-satisfaction that they've done a good job. They are looking forward to returning home to their abodes or their tavern rooms in their base town. And that is when the twist comes in. Many GMs, I think, including myself, will now use the narrative for the journey home. And before long, the party will be sat in their taverns, sharing and singing their songs of the exploits to each other and anybody else who would listen. However, this final idea makes a lot more of the journey home. Rather than just using the narrative, the journey home becomes a series of encounters. All the previous ideas could be used, but you could add that someone or something is pursuing the group, or there's a time factor involved. Maybe they have to get the cure back as soon as possible. Of course, there will be many encounters that will hinder their progress. But with reduced resources and a hideous beast hot on their heels, the players will be pushed to their limits on their journey home. If you have any of your own ideas to share, then please do share them in the comments below. It'd be fantastic to hear them. And if you are interested in the games we play or our campaign worlds, then you can find the links to them in the comments below, as well as the various methods to support me. Until next time, I hope all your roles are successful and the bards create songs about your campaign for years to come. This is the gibbering GM returning to his campaign. See you all later. Bye.